Welcome to part one of our selection programming series. And in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at if statements and how they work. So for those of you who don't know, code is executed in particular ways. And there are three main ways that a code will run um, the way you write it. So the first way is sequential programming. Then there's selection program, which we're going to be covering in this series. And then there's iteration, which we'll be covering in a later series. So what is sequential? For those of you who've forgotten what sequential programming is, that's where code is executed one line after each other in the order that you put it. So for example, you might want to get a particular number as input, and then you get the second number as input. And then you only once you've got those two values, can you then do the calculation. And then after that, you would display that answer. That is sequential programming, where you do the code one after each other in the order that it's been given. Now, selection programming is slightly different. So what happens in selection programming, that's when you want certain parts of code to not be executed or certain codes to be executed based on certain conditions. So, for example, let's say we're going to get a mark from the user as input. And now I'm going to go over here to this if statement, for example, it could be an if statement that says if the mark is, a, is greater than 50, then I want, if that's true, then I want to display the word pass. But if it's not true, I want to display the word fail. So there are two bits of code there, the pass and the fail code, those two different displays. And we don't want them both to be displayed. We only want the pass to be displayed under certain conditions. And if those conditions are not met, then we want the fail to be displayed. And so that's basically what selection programming is. And to use selection programming, we use an if statement in order to implement that. So let's have a look at the structure of if statement. So there we've got if followed by a condition followed by the word then. So, and what if that condition is true, it will execute the statements that happen after, or the statements, or only one statement, after the condition. So that's how an if statement works. If I added a second statement, that second statement, although it looks like it's indented, it looks like it's a part of the if statement, it's not actually. As if statement only executes one statement. So that second statement will not be attached to that condition. That second statement will run every single time where the first statement will only run if the if statement is true now what happens if we want more than one thing to happen if the condition is true do i have to write that if statement for each statement no what you can do is you can put those statements inside a begin and end now whatever's between the begin and end will be attached to the if statements true um, scenario so if that condition is true all of those statements between the begin and end will be executed. So that's how you use an if statement. Now, just a little hint. My suggestion, even if you've only got one statement that the if statement is going to execute, my suggestion is to always use a begin end. The reason being, later on you might go, hey, I also want the if statement to do this, and then you forget about the if statement, and then things go get a little bit messy. My suggestion, always use a begin and end with an if statement. That way you can see what is attached technically to that if statement's condition if it's true. Okay, so what is a condition first of all? So like, well, you, you, Mr. Long, you talked about these conditions, but what is a condition? A condition is basically a question, and that question must either have an answer of yes or true, or it must have an answer of no or false. So if you look at a condition, you must be able to clearly say the answer to that condition is a true or the answer to the condition is false. Now, how do we ask these questions? Well, the types of questions we ask, most of, the, most of the questions you're going to be asked are going to revolve around these operators. There are six of them. So let's go through the first three. The first one is we ask if two things are the same, if two things are equal. Or we could ask, is one thing bigger than another thing or greater than another thing? Or we could ask if something is smaller or less than another thing. So those are the first three. Now, the other three are the opposites of those. So, for example, the opposite of equal is obviously not equal if things are not the same. And then the opposite of greater than, but you might go, Mr. Long, the opposite of greater than, isn't that less than? But you've got less than. No, the opposite of greater than is not less than. The opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. So if you've got greater than 50, the opposite is not less than 50. The opposite is less than equal to 50. So don't forget about the less than equal to option. So therefore, you should have an idea of what the opposite of less than is. Yes, greater than or equal to. Okay, so there we go. Those are the types of questions that you're going to ask. Now, those bottom three, 
I want you to have a look at your keyboard now and see if you can find them on your keyboard. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop you right there because you're going to take a long time to try to find them because they're not there. They're very difficult to find. And uh, so how do we type that in Delphi? Well, we don't have to insert any special characters like you would in a Word document. We've got a special notation that we use in Delphi. So for the greater than equal to, we use a greater than symbol followed by an equal to symbol. So that's how you will denote greater than equal to. Please take note, it's the way you say it. You don't say equal to greater than. So it's, it's always the greater than symbol first, then the equal to symbol first. So that's how I remember the order. It must be the greater than symbol, then the equal to symbol. The same goes for the less than or equal to symbol. It's the less than symbol followed by the equal to symbol. Now, the not equal to sign, that's a little bit tricky. I'm going to show, tell you my little trick of trying to remember how a not equal to symbol is um, done. So I want, have any of you ever been to a Jay-Z concert? Um, well, Mr. Long has been to a Jay-Z concert. It might be hard to, to believe, but I have been to a Jay-Z concert. I loved it. And when I was at that concert, something that Jay-Z did in the middle of his concert, he says, put your diamonds in the sky. And it looks something like that. He said, put your diamonds in the sky. And we all did this, and it was all fantastic and stuff like that. And that symbol there, you see how his hands are looking, that symbol like that, that is our not equal to symbol in Delphi. So it's basically the less than symbol followed by the greater than symbol. So it looks like a diamond. So whenever you are in an exam, you're thinking, what's the not equal to symbol? Just remember to put your diamonds in the sky um, and therefore you'll have your not equal to symbol. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. So here we've got an example. You can see that the condition, the question, has a variable or value followed by one of those operators that we discussed in the previous slide, followed by another variable or value. So you, there are things on either side of those um, operators. So you can see our mark is greater than or equal to 50. I must, if I know what our mark's value is, I must clearly be able to say, hey, that question is either true or it's false. Okay. And if it is true, let's take an example. Let's take an example where our mark is 80. Let's say our mark, we give our mark a value of 80. So if it comes to this line of code, is our mark greater than or equal to 50? Well, if it's 80, it's true. So therefore, that true statement will execute the pass and display pass. And then once that if statement is finished, it will jump out of the if statement and do whatever code happens after the if statement. So therefore, it will also display the word done. Okay, so that's what will happen if our mark is an 80. Now, what happens if our mark is a 40? And in this case, our mark is greater than 50. That's a false. Therefore, it will not run the passcode. It will skip over the, the if statement. The if statement is false, so it won't do any of the code that's inside the if statement. And it will jump out and it will just display the word done. Okay, so there you get an idea of how an if statement actually works. Now. If we've got an if statement and we've got a condition and we want to execute those, if, those statements, um, but what happens, like for example, when we did that flowchart, what happens if they we want to display something if that condition is false? So those statements will be executed if it's true. Must I have another if statement for the, the chances of when it's false? No, well, you can use an else statement. So if the condition is true, it will run the first two statements. But if the condition is false, it will jump to the else part now and execute that statement. But an else only does one statement. Okay. But thing to remember, just a little thing you must be aware of. You see that semicolon next above the else? There's a rule. There must be no semicolon in the line before an else. So whatever line is above the else, not all the lines, just the first line above the else, that line must not have a semicolon. So you must make sure that you remove it. Okay. And remember, an else statement only executes one statement. But what happens, Mr. Long, if you want to do lots of things if it's false? Well, just like we did with the if statement, we're going to put those statements in a begin and end, and then we can have multiple statements. My suggestion, again, always use the begins and ends. Okay. So let's have a look at this example. So yeah, like we did before, we're going to say that our mark is an 80. So if that is true, then it will display the word pass because our mark is greater than 50. That's true. So it will execute the show message pass part and it will jump out the if statement and not do anything else in this if statement because the true part was executed and now we finished. Let's take another scenario when our mark is 40. 
Now, our mark greater than 50, that condition is false. So it will not execute the show message pass part. It will jump out of that part and go straight to the else part because that part will be executed if the condition is false. And it will simply display fail and then jump out the if statement and continue from there. And that is how an if statement works. Let's have a look at a quick example in Delphi. Yeah, we've got a little program where we're going to get in a value from uh, the edit control. We're going to get in that mark and I'm going to check if it's greater than 50 like we did. Let's do greater than 50. And we're going to show the word pass or fail. And then I've got this show message done, which will execute irrespective. It's got this show message got nothing to do with the if statement. So it'll run this code. It will check which part of these two uh, show messages to run in the if statement and then it will always do the show message done just so that you can see how sequential programming gets done in the middle of the selection programming so let's run it and see what it does so it's going to ask for a value so it's running boom. quickly compile there shouldn't be any errors oh there we go there we go there we go so there's my little program so it's going to first run the if statement so it's going to take in that 80 put it into our mark and it went in our mark. Is it greater than 50? It is. That 80 is great. So it's showing the word pass. And if I click OK, you'll see that it skipped the fail part and jumped straight to the done. And it's done. And now if I change that to a 40 and run it, you see that it went and asked, is 40 greater than 50? No, it's not. So it skipped the pass bit and jumped straight to the fail bit. And once the fail part is done, it'll jump out and run with the rest of the code as normal, which means run the done show message. So there we go. So that's how you do a sh uh, R mark is greater than 50. Remember the different operators. You can see if things are equal to. You can see if things are greater than, if it's less than, if it's greater than, equal to, if it's less than, equal to. And remember, not equal to. Put your diamonds in the sky. There we go. Not equal to. Okay, so those are your different um, operators and remember it's always something followed by an operator followed by something so that's something like a variable or a value so you've got it you can't you can't have this you can't say you can't say it's greater than 50 what what's greater than 50 so you must have a variable or value if that value is greater than or equal to 50 it must be a question that you can look at directly and say yes that's true or no that is false for more videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, and uh, remember to like us on, face on Facebook and Twitter. Give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.